Okay, we're going to look at different ways to charge. And the first of these is charging an object by friction, which hopefully the name alone will tell you how we do this. So what we look at when we charge by friction is something called electron affinity. Now, electron affinity means you have an affinity for electrons or that you love electrons. So the higher the electron affinity, the more love it has for electrons, which means it wants the electrons. So we try to make things electron affinity or the love of electrons. So that happens by hopefully rubbing them. So here's how charging by friction works. So we take two balloons hanging here and we rub them on our hair. All right, and we just rub them across there. Now, balloons rubbed on human hair become negatively charged and will have an attraction to the hair because the hair is positive charge, right? Could do the polarization. So the electrons jump to here and make these negative charge. Now, when you pull your head away, what you see is these negative charged balloons will repel each other. But if you put a positively charged object in case your head, you will attract one of the balloons to you. But rubbing them makes them negative. So that's what charging by friction is. That's when you rub objects together to give it a charge. Now, we can determine what's positive and what's negative by using what's called the triboelectric series. And you can see we have a series as a, as a vertical series with things at the bottom and things at the top. And as we go up the table, okay, we increase electron affinity. So what this means is, if we take two objects on this list and rub them together, the object that's higher on the list will become negative, will take the electrons, and the item that's lower on the list will become less negative or become positive. So the electrons will jump from one to the other. So for example, let's say I take silk and I rub it on some copper. Okay, What's going to happen is the silk is going to give its electrons to the copper. The copper will develop a negative charge and the silk will be the positive charge, just like in the example of the balloon and hair. And uh, we see the balloons made out of rubber. And if we rub that on cat fur, which is the closest thing to hair on this list that I can see, what's going to happen is, since cat fur is below rubber, rubber is going to develop a negative charge because it wants the electrons, while cat fur will stay positive. So the higher up you go, it's the greatest tendency to acquire electrons or negative charge. And again, that's called the triboelectric series. Now, this leads us to a law, law of conservation of charge, another conservation law that we see in science. And what that means is this, charge always conserves. So when we look at the charges prior to and after a process, the total amount of charge is the same before the process starts as it is after the process ends. So, for example, you have um, the balloon situation, right, and the hair. Now, initially, everybody's neutral. When you rub your head on these balloons, your electrons are jumping over to here, okay? But your hair is not collecting any more electrons. So even though the electrons leave, these become negative. Your hair becomes positive. The reason this happens is your hair becomes positive because you have less electrons than protons, right? The balloons become negative because their number of electrons is greater than their number of protons, very similar to what we talked about in video one. But the total charge Total number of electrons, total number of protons, is the same before we start as it is after we're done. So the total number of electrons stays the same. They just switch places. They go from the hair to the balloon, which makes the balloons negative and the hair positive.